Mary Ann and I are trying to find out what happened to the lost tribe of Scotland, the Picts. In 900 AD, over 700 years after fending off the Romans, they disappear from history. Why? So far, our only theories are that Nessie ate them or God cursed them. Clearly, we need to go back to basics. Who were the Picts? Mary Ann. To be honest, the biggest mystery about this story for me is why Clive gets to drive a car and all I get is driving rain. To get a clearer picture of who the Picts really were, I've come here to the tiny village of Abilemno, which is home to some very unusual carvings indeed. A man who doesn't mind a bit of, well, a lot of rain is Professor Gordon Noble. Hello. Good. Hello. How's it going? Yeah. An expert on the Picts and their symbols. Wow, look at this, just by the side of a random road. Yes, quite spectacular, isn't it? There's more than 200 of these symbol stones, and really there's ones turning up almost every year. Gordon believes some of the Pictish stones could be as much as 1,700 years old. They're the most definitive physical evidence the Picts left behind. Mind you, it is possible nothing else would have survived the Scottish weather. We don't have much written evidence of the Picts, but what is the archaeology telling us about these people? So in terms of you know, historical sources, they're very limited. We have almost no indigenous records. These stones are covered in Pictish pagan symbols. Some are recognisably animals common to Scotland, but other symbols are far more mysterious. Z-rods, V-rods, crescents, and notched rectangles. Do we have any idea what these are for? So it seems to be, you know, essentially a, a simplistic form of writing, perhaps, that is identifying a person. And... Mary Ann. Ex exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's my stone. Yeah. It's certainly not writing as we know it. It could be closer to a simple marker or an iconic image, a sort of Pictish emoji, if you will. It's proclaiming a name and identity of probably a powerful lineage. So it's essentially you know, a, a claim to territory. That's so cool and so weird. What we do know is that these symbols are unique to the Picts. The earliest stones are rooted in paganism, displaying images the Picts may have believed were spiritual. But as they converted to Christianity, the Picts' later carvings evolved to incorporate these new beliefs. OK, so here we are at Aberlemno um, churchyard. Wow. This spectacular stone here. So by this period, from certainly the 7th century, the Picts are Christian and they begin carving monuments like this with the fantastic cross on this side of the monument. The cross symbol is so obviously Christian, but do we know what kind of Christianity they were practicing? Early Christian saints are not that different to you know, the, the Druids that you'd find in the Pictish court. So they're, they're performing miracles, they're controlling the weather, uh, they're encountering fabulous beasts, uh, sacrifice of animals. It's an evolving mixture of early Celtic Christianity with a good pinch of Pictish pagan mysticism thrown in for good measure. 